28th lecture on 28th February and we continue our discussion on interconnection of two port networks. Last time we had considered an example which we could not finish. Let us look at this example, it is a very interesting network. We had two capacitances C C and there was a resistance R. <coughs> this is the input, input port and this is the output port V2. And he said that we will analyze the network for the transfer function V2 by V1, V2 by V1 under open circuit conditions, okay, under open circuit conditions. And we wanted to do this by using the interconnection of networks. Obviously, this is a parallel connection of two networks. One of them is L R. As I had commented, this is actually a single inductance. The resistance is part of the inductance. All right. I mention this again because this is one of the major applications of this network. It is used to measure the inductance and Q of a coil, inductance and its associated series resistance. If the two are known, then we know what the Q is. So, one of the networks is this. Let us call this the A network and the other network is simply the T network CCR. Let us call this the B network and we see that both of them are three terminal networks and therefore, parallel interconnection will make the y parameters add all right so let us take the first network that is the a network I draw it again l and r the y parameters of this as is obtained by inspection is 1 over r plus sl y 1 1 y 2 2 is also 1 over r plus sl Agreed? And if you compare this with the equivalent circuit, the pi equivalent circuit, then y12 is minus 1 over SL plus R and this is also minus 1 over SL plus R. This is as simple as that. This is the YA. Okay. To find YB, we do not, as I said, we do not want to commit to memory any formula. Let us do it from the z parameters which can be obtained by inspection. If this is the B network and you can see that z b the z parameters are if this is open r plus 1 over s c. Similarly, y 2 2 shall also be the same r plus 1 over s c and z 1 2 shall be simply equal to r. Okay. So, we know z 1 1, z 2 2 and z 1 2. This is a symmetrical network. All right. That means, I, if I draw a vertical line, it is identical on both sides. If you want a perfect symmetry, you can break this up into twice r and twice r in parallel and draw a vertical line. Okay. It is a symmetrical network. My z parameters are r plus 1 over s c. I reproduce this here r and r plus 1 over s c. What I am interested in are the y parameters <coughs> and you notice that because of symmetry y 1 1 and y 2 2 shall be identical and this would be z 1 1 or z 2 2 that is r plus 1 over s c divided by the determinant and you see that the determinant is r plus 1 over s c whole square minus r squared and therefore, this is equal to r plus 1 over s c in the denominator r squared shall cancel and I shall get twice r divided by s c plus 1 over s squared c squared. Let us leave it like this for the present. Okay. This is my y 1 1, y 2 2 and my y 1 2 and y 2 1 shall be equal to minus z 1 2 which is minus r 
divided by the same determinant. We have already found out the determinant. So, 2 r by s c plus 1 over s squared c squared. Agreed? So, I have found out the b parameters, the admittance parameters for the b network and therefore, for the bridged t network, well this network incidentally has the architecture of a T, this is a T which has been bridged from input to output through LR, LR is the bridge. So, it is called the name is bridged T, okay? bridged T network. <coughs> Therefore, the Y parameters of this network shall be simply the summation of the two Y parameters. So, it would be 1 over R plus SL that was for the A network plus Y 1 1 B which is R plus 1 over S C divided by 2 R by S C plus 1 over S square C square all right. And the Y 2 2 parameter shall be the same Y 1 1 and Y 2 2 shall be the same whereas, Y 1 2 shall be minus minus let us you say another bracket minus 1 over r plus s l plus simply r divided by 2 r over s c plus 1 over s square c square. Is that okay? Is that okay? We are adding the y 1 2 parameters. y 1 2 for the b network is right here and y 1 2 for the a network was minus 1 over r plus s l. So, I have combined the two okay? and this will be the same as y 2 1 parameter and therefore, I have found out the total network admittance matrix. And if I do that, <coughs> if, I, if I have found out the total admittance matrix, then what is v 2 by v 1 under short under open circuit conditions V 2 by V 1 in terms of Y parameters is given by no that is not open circuit. You take the second equation I 2 is Y 2 1 V 1 plus Y 2 2 V 2 if I 2 is 0, then V 2 by V 1 would be minus Y 2 1 divided by Y 2 2. First one, I do not know the input current. I have to take from the second one. That was the whole idea in finding the Y parameters that I can express in terms of Y 2 1 and Y 2 2. And therefore, my transfer function is there any question at this point? Sir, is this a general rule that uh, wire parameters add up if, uh, if the circuit is not changed? That is correct. Y parameters add if the character of the two component circuits are not changed because of the parallel interconnection. Okay. So, is it the same as Z parameters? Say no. Z parameters will take up Z parameters a little bit. Z parameters add if the networks are connected in series which we shall see in a, in a few minutes. Let me complete this. Okay? Now, the reason why I am going through this example is that this is a very interesting network. If you write the expression V 2 by V 1 with the parameters that have already been found out, you will see that this is 1 by R plus S L. The negative sign is cancelled because minus Y 2 1 divided by Y 2 2 plus R divided by twice R by S C plus 1 by S squared C squared. And in the denominator, is that okay? Minus Y 1 2. In the denominator, all that I need to change is the numerator of the second term. The denominator is the same twice R by S C plus 1 over S squared C squared. And in the numerator, we shall have R plus 1 over S C. Agreed? So, I simplify this. 
I simplify this by multiplying by R plus SL multiplied by this. Then in the numerator I get by inspection twice R divided by SC plus 1 over S squared C squared plus capital R multiplied by R plus SL all right and in the denominator in the denominator I shall have all these three terms plus an additional term which would be 1 by SC multiplied by R plus SL. Okay. So, I can write this <coughs> let me write this again V2 by V1 is equal to twice R divided by SC plus 1 over S squared C squared plus capital R R plus SL divided by numerator plus 1 over SC R plus SL. Agreed? Let me clear these terms of S squared C squared that is I multiply both numerator and denominator by S squared C squared alright. Then I get this as equal to if I multiply by S squared C squared this term gets into unity plus 2SCR plus S squared C squared R multiplied by R plus SL and in the denominator I shall get the same term as the numerator plus SCR plus SL. Is that okay? All right. Let me call this an H of S, a transfer function then you notice that h of j omega numerator let me take only the numerator okay let's call this as n of s by d of s then this is equal to n of j omega it's a polynomial in s let's put s equal to j omega then we get n of j omega the numerator as equal to 1 plus twice j omega c r minus omega squared c squared r multiplied by r plus j omega l all right let me collect the real and the imaginary parts is it okay s squared goes as minus omega squared and s goes as j omega let me collect the <coughs> the real and imaginary parts I get 1 minus omega squared c squared r r okay, plus j omega c r 2 minus omega squared not c squared c l is that all? Yeah. I have taken omega c r so omega c okay fine omega squared l c. Now we investigate the possibility whether this can be 0 or not. Can this be 0? If it is so then the real part as well as the imaginary part should vanish identically all right which means that yes indeed it can be zero e at the frequency omega naught which is equal to 1 over c square root r r is that okay the real part equal to zero under what condition when the frequency satisfies this and both must be satisfied and L should be equal to no 2 divided by omega naught squared C which is equal to yes if I substitute for omega naught squared from here 
omega naught squared c 2 no it 2 r r into c not divided by okay so twice c r r l should be equal to twice c r r all right now <coughs> under this condition what happens to the denominator you see when inductance satisfies this relation and the frequency satisfies this relation what happens to the denominator is the denominator also equal to 0 no denominator is 0 plus a quantity which is not equal to 0 if it was 0 by 0 form then we would have been in trouble but it is a 0 divided by a non zero term and therefore what is the conclusion that the output voltage shall be exactly 0 when the inductance and the frequency satisfy these two conditions all right and so this is also a notch network exactly like the parallel t network you recall that the parallel t in which we had a c c then what was this r by 2 and then we had an r r and 2 c exactly like this our bridge to t network is also capable of giving a null transmission at a certain frequency. Now <coughs> let me draw this network then I will tell you what use it can be made of c c r and then L R the use that is made of is to measure an unknown inductance L R and how it is measured is you vary what are the things that you can vary C and C these have to be varied simultaneously because you have to keep them identical and in the market there are available what are known as ganged capacitors ganged gang capacitors two identical capacitors which vary simultaneously <coughs> okay so two gang capacitors and you can also vary capital r okay or you can vary the frequency of the source all right what you do is if you wish to vary only c and the frequency of the source set these to a particular value and vary omega till you get approximately a null. Then at that point you vary C to sharpen the null and you go ahead doing this alternately till you get absolutely zero transmission at a particular frequency and at that frequency the value of L would be twice C R R multiplied by small r which you do not know but small r is obtained from the frequency that is C R capital R you know C and R if you know omega 0 then you know small r and therefore you know capital L as well as small r. This is the basis of one of the Hewlett Packard instruments for measurement of inductance and its Q all right a bridged T network it is one of the one of the most useful networks in electronic measurements and instrumentation and I thought I would do this <coughs> completely any question and I did this analysis through interconnection of two ports I used I looked at it as an interconnection of two ports parallel interconnection and a favorable parallel interconnection that is a three terminal network parallel with another three terminal network and therefore y parameters add without any hesitation without any reservation all right Okay. Now the question was what happened if we connect two networks in series let us look at that suppose we have a network N A and a network N B now series interconnection means series interconnection means that the same current just like two impedances if they are connected in series it means that the same current flows through 
both the impedances. Here, here series interconnection of two, two ports means that the same current flows through the identical ports of the two networks. In other words, what we simply do is connect this to this. Then you know if this is a port, the current here should be equal to the current here and if this is a port then the current here should be equal to the current here. In other words, the same current should flow through both the first ports of the two networks. In a similar manner, a series interconnection at the output port shall mean that you connect these two, then this current and this current shall be identical and this current and this current should be identical. All right. If you call this I2 and if you call this I1, then I1 is the port current of NA as well as NB at port number 1 and I2 is the port current of NA as well as NB at port number 2. However, there is a problem. The problem is, well, before I come up to the problem, if the two voltages are V1 and V2 of the composite network, that is two networks are connected in series, then you notice that V1 is the sum of V1 A and V1 B. Okay, V1 is this plus this. Similarly, V2 is the sum of V2A and V2B. Okay? And therefore, it is logical to say that V1, V2, this matrix is the sum of these matrices V1A, V2A plus V1B, V2B and each of them is the Z matrix multiplied by the current matrix and therefore Z A I 1 I 2 same current plus this point clear V 1 B V 2 B is, is related to I 1 I 2 by the matrix Z B and therefore, it is natural to conclude that the Z parameters add. That is, this would be equal to Z A plus Z B multiplied by the column vector I 1 I 2. However, as I said there is a problem. The problem is that if this interconnection changes the character of either network, either or both, then you must be careful. For example, the NA could be a network like this. NA could have two impedances like this and a connection from here and NB may have a short circuit here. Then you see connecting this like this, it is changing the character of NA because the two lower terminals are being bridged by a short circuit and therefore all this procedure shall not work. The connection, <coughs> the addition of Z parameters shall be valid only under the condition that the interconnection does not change the character of either network. All right. And typically we could have done this if this was also a short circuit, then the Z parameters would have added. And therefore, to add the Z parameters as in parallel interconnection, we use a transformer. That is, in general, our network would be like this N A, and instead of connecting directly, we shall use a 1 is to 1 ideal transformer, 1 is to 1 ideal transformer and <coughs> the voltages, suppose this is V 1 A and this is V 2 A, the current is I 2 A and this current is I 1 A. 
then if this is a 1 is to 1 transformer then what is the voltage here same V 2 A and what is the current here I 2 A and therefore, these voltages and currents are transferred to the secondary with physical isolation and therefore, therefore, now a series connection will not change the character of the two networks. In other words, we can have an N B in which this is V 1 B, this is V 2 B and I can now make the series interconnection that is what I do is I connect this to this and take this out here. This voltage is I 2 this current is I 2 B okay. and this current is I 1 B I make the series interconnection and I extend this. So, this voltage now is V 1 and this voltage is V 2 and you notice that I 2 A and I 2 B are the same and the same as I 2 for the composite network. Similarly, I 1 A and I, I 1 B are the same and equal to the I 1 of the composite network and it satisfies the conditions that V 1 is equal to V 1 A plus V 1 B. Similarly, V 2 is equal to V 2 A plus V 2 B. Therefore, the Z parameters add that is the Z parameter of the total network is Z A plus Z B. Question? You want me to go through this again? Yes? Yes. Okay. First question is why did you require this transformer? We showed we showed that if we connect networks in series without paying heat to whether the internal character is being disturbed or not, we shall not succeed in finding the Z parameter. Right, because one of the networks may be disturbed. Therefore, we use a 1 is to 1 transformer to keep the voltages and currents intact 1 is to 1 ideal transformer. So, whatever voltage and current here are they reflect here. Now, I can connect because physically this point and this point are isolated from each other. Okay? These two points are isolated from each other and they may be connected to any any bridging terminal any bridging connection for n sub b it does not matter it does not change anything in either network n a or n b all right. Then we argue that because of series interconnection the current i 1 a and i 1 b are the same as i 1. Similarly, current i 2 is the same as i 2 a or i 2 b. On the other hand, the voltages at the two ports are sum of the two voltages of the two networks. V 1 is V 1 A plus V 1 B, V 2 is V 2 A plus V 2 B and therefore, let me repeat the procedure V 1 V 2 is equal to V 1 A V 2 A plus V 1 B plus V 2 B and V 1 A V 2 A is Z 1 1 A, Z 1 2 A, Z 2 1 A, Z 2 2 A multiplied by I 1 A I 2 A which are the same as I 1 and I 2. Okay. Similarly, for V 2 V 1 B V 2 B we write Z 1 1 B z 1 to b z 2 1 b z 2 to b multiplied by i 1 b i 2 b which are the same as i 1 and i 2. This happens because i 1 equal to i 1 a equal to i 1 b and i 2 equal to i 2 a plus equal to i 2 b. 
which means that now because this matrix is the same as this matrix I can simply combine them into Z 1 1 A plus Z 1 1 B Z 1 2 A plus Z 1 2 B Z 2 1 A plus Z 2 1 B Z 2 2 A plus Z 2 2 B multiplied by I 1 and I 2 and it is obvious that the Z parameters have added. If you do this without paying attention to the architecture of the two networks you you might be very and you might be an easy prey to making a mistake. What kind of mistake? A two port mistake <laughs> or an interconnection mistake ok. So, you must pay heed to what is being connected and how are they being connected. We uh, <coughs> conclude this discussion on two ports, uh, this part of the discussion with a special kind of two port namely a ladder network. In the previous problem solving session we had already considered an example of a ladder network and we had illustrated a particular method of analysis, a particular method of analysis by starting from the output end and going towards the input end. Well, this method has been found to be very simple. You do not have to write loop equations, node equations or anything else, no simultaneous equations and so on. And what I shall what I shall do is instead of taking the general case and showing I will take a particular example. An example which I have been insisting that you, you do it, I shall do it today as an example of ladder network analysis and then I shall illustrate some interesting uh, <coughs> variations of this procedure. I have an identical three section ladder and I want to find the transfer function V0 by VI. I had commented that this is a network which is used for phase shifting by 180 degrees and is used in an oscillator called phase shift oscillator all right. Now, <coughs> to, to analyze this what I do is I proceed like this first I find this current let me use it first I use this current let me call this as I 1 all right. So, I 1 is equal to V 0 S C ok and this current is the same as I 1 because this is open circuit and therefore, then I call this voltage as V 1. So, V 1 would be equal to I 1 R that means V 0 S C R plus V 0. I write this as V 0 1 plus let us say P. I do not want to write SCR again and again, let me write this as P ok. P is the new variable, it is a it's the original variable multiplied by a constant CR ok. After I find after I found out V 1, then I find this current, let us call this current as I 2, then I 2 is equal to V 1 times SC which is equal to V 0 SC multiplied by 1 plus P all right. After I found out I 2 then I find this current let us call this I 3. You notice that I 3 is equal to I 1 plus I 2 and therefore, this is V 0 S C I 1 plus I 2 multiplied by 2 plus P is that ok. right I have added this and this V 0 S C taken common. So, it becomes 2 plus P all right after I found out I 3 then I find V 2 this voltage obviously V 2 is equal to I 3 R plus V 1 and I 3 R would be V 0 P 2 plus P why because I 3 is V 0 S C 
you multiply by r, so v0 scr multiplied by 2 plus p plus v1 we have already found out to be v0 1 plus p. So, this is equal to v0 yes 1 plus 3 p plus p squared agreed v0 plus 1 plus 3 p plus p squared. Then after I found out v2 I find this current let us call this as I4 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 is equal to V2 times SC that is V0 SC 1 plus 3 P plus P squared all right and finally you see finally this current I5 I5 shall be the sum of I4 and I3. So, I5 is equal to I4 plus I3 is equal to V0 SC can be taken common. The constant would be 3 plus 4 P plus P square all right. I3 we have I5 we have found out and therefore finally what remains to be found out is VI. VI is I5 R plus V2. Vi is I5 R plus V2 plus this voltage. Now, <coughs> if we substitute, you notice that I have to multiply this by R. So, I will get V0 and add to this, okay? add to V2. So, I will get, let me do this, 1 plus 3 P plus P squared plus what shall I get from the second term I 5 R 3 P plus 4 P squared plus P cubed all right and I have obtained what I wanted to obtain that is I have obtained V 0 by V i this is the transfer function I wanted this would be 1 by 1 plus 6 P plus 5 P square plus p cubed ok. Not only that I have not only found out the transfer function I have also found out all the currents and voltages in the network is not that right. You see the, the by product of this procedure is that I have found out all currents and voltages in the network agreed. For example, if one wishes to take a voltage from here. Okay. We know what is V1 by V i or if this current is of interest we know that also. So, it is a complete analysis of the network. If I, if I so require I can find out now the input impedance, input impedance will be V i divided by I 5 correct or any other transfer impedance for example, I 1 divided by V i <coughs> I know that also. I know everything all network functions. I can find out why the z parameters, y parameters, any any parameter for example, okay. I know everything that I need to know. Oh, no. So, this ladder network is for p capacitors only or can we generalize it for n capacitors? For n capacitors. No, for n impedances, any combination of impedances, okay. Let me tell you what is a, a general ladder is. It looks like the architecture is the ladder lying on its side. Ladder usually is two two rods like this and then bridges okay that is that is what is the ladder it is lying on its side. So, that is the architecture and this procedure can be extended to any ladder network any ladder network start from the output and go towards the input and all that you have to do is to find currents in the shunt terms and voltages across the series arms that is all. And there is no simultaneous equation, there is no node equation, there is no loop equation, there is nothing. It is simply a common sense and going backwards. Okay. Now, let me illustrate the important property of this network with the transfer function. Let us call this transfer function as H of S equal to 1 by 1 plus 6 P plus 5 P square plus P cubed and P as you remember is S C R all right. 
if s is g omega under sinusoidal excitation then h of j omega if s is j omega you can write this p as j omega c r all right call this as u that is write p as equal to j u i don't want to write omega c r again and again then my h of j omega would be 1 plus j 6 u minus 5 u squared u is a real quantity okay then plus p cubed that would be minus j u cubed is that okay all right so i continue this in the next page h of j omega is equal to 1 by let me collect the real terms and the imaginary terms plus j u 6 minus u squared okay is that okay the phase shift the angle of h of j omega angle of h shall be either 0 degree or 180 degrees if the imaginary part in the denominator is 0. If the imaginary part in the denominator is 0 then h of j omega is purely real it can have either a positive sign or a negative sign is the point clear if it is a positive sign then the phase shift is 0 if it is a negative sign then the phase shift is 180. So, it is either 0 or 180 when u squared is equal to 6 which means that the frequency omega naught would be equal to square root of 6 divided by C r is that ok u squared is omega naught squared c squared r squared that is 6 that means at a frequency f 0 which is equal to square root 6 divided by 2 pi C r okay and at this frequency h of j omega 0 the value of the transfer function would be equal to 1 by u squared is 6 and therefore 1 minus 30 that is 29 and therefore it is minus 1 by 29 you see why it is minus and therefore the phase shift angle of h of j omega 0 is equal to pi 180 degrees ok. Now, let us see how this network is used in a phase shift oscillator. Let me show the network as simply n it is a 3 terminal network ok it is a 3 terminal network R c network at omega 0 at omega 0 this voltage the output voltage is minus 1 over 29 times the input voltage if this is V i ok. Suppose now I connect from here an amplifier of gain minus 29 that is the amplifier is a gain of 29 and a phase shift of 180 degrees then this voltage this voltage should be exactly equal to V i is not that right this is minus 1 by 29 V i multiply by minus 29 then this would be exactly V i which means that I can connect these two points without any disturbance and the active network then is forced to adjust its input and output such that this voltage is exactly equal to this voltage and this is the condition for oscillation ok this is the condition for oscillation and therefore without any input without any input no input is connected you simply connect the RC network and the active device which can be an op amp it can be an op amp with a negative gain therefore you will have I am sure you have studied this this will be 29 times R 1 and this will be R 1 correct. The only problem is you know the network n 
has its last element as a what is the last element a capacitor okay this capacitor will see an impedance of r1 therefore the r1 should be much larger than the impedance of the capacitor r1 must be much greater than 1 by omega not c at this frequency then the network performance shall not be disturbed agreed and you will get a frequency you will get pure sinusoid at the frequency root 6 divided by 2 pi c r hertz ok. There are many questions that can arise at this stage which will be answered which have perhaps been answered or which will be answered in the course on analog electronic circuits as to who starts the oscillation how does the network know that it has to how does this circuit know it has to oscillate no it does not have to know because any point in nature any point whatsoever has associated with it some amount of noise and an electrical circuit there will be a noise component here and the noise is usually a wide band noise wide band spectrum from which this particular frequency omega naught which is root which is root 6 by CR is appropriate for going through this loop and sustaining itself. So, all other frequencies are rejected and it is the only one which is sustained sustained for oscillations and therefore, it oscillates. Let me uh, tell you something else about this network it is a very interesting network. Suppose I have the same network and you know that let me call this V O 1 and this is V i ok. Then you know that note this carefully please you know that V O 1 is equal to V i divided by 29 angle 180 at omega naught equal to root 6 divided by C r. This we have proved that this voltage is 1 29th of this with, an, with a phase shift of 180 degrees ok. Suppose, suppose instead of <coughs> connecting like this well suppose I take the I take an output voltage here. please note carefully what I am doing. Suppose instead of taking the output here I take the output here V 0 2 all right. Then what can you say about V 0 2 divided by V i what can you say about this transfer function this would be 28 by 29. Now, why is that? I do not agree. Okay. Why do not I agree? 30 by 29. That is correct. And the angle? 0 degree. Is this obvious? It is obvious because V i is equal to V 0 2 plus V 0 1. Simple K V L. So, what you see between this point and these two points the phase shift is 0 degree and the gain is slightly greater than 1, 1 plus 1 by 29 agreed. Now, let us look at this network, <coughs> let us look at this network and let us say let us call this as uh, ok, let me draw, draw the network like this. R R R this is where I am taking my output R R R and then I have C C another C hmm? 
input from here. From here, okay? Between these two points. RC, 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 fine. And therefore, if I put an input here, this output at this frequency root 6 by CR shall be slightly greater than 1 and the phase shift will be 0. Okay. Suppose now I connect an active device like this with proper biasing circuits. I connect a BJT which is an emitter follower. This goes to plus VCC. Okay. Now, you know emitter follower has a gain not here, I have to take the output from here. Emitter follower as you know has a gain very nearly unity, but slightly less than unity, slightly less than unity, is not that right? What is the phase shift? 0. So, the total phase shift from here to here is 0, 0 plus 0 is 0 and the gain can be adjusted to be exactly equal to 1 because this is slightly less than 1, this is slightly greater than 1. In other words, if I connect this point to this point, okay, it should act as an oscillator. This is the second use of the phase shifting network, uses only one transistor, one transistor which is again greater than less than unity. Okay. Does that make this a passive device? No, it is still an active device. Why? An emitter follower, although it cannot give a voltage gain, it can give current gain. So, it gives power gain, which means that it can supply energy and this is how an oscillator is obtained. Question? How can we adjust the gain? How can we adjust the gain? Well, I can adjust the gain. Yeah, I can adjust the gain here. In fact, I can adjust the gain like this. <coughs> Let me make a connection here. Okay, and this is a potentiometer. I can tune the potentiometer to get oscillation. And there are these these are very um, inspiring experiences. If you if you connect this network in the laboratory and you adjust the gain. There is nothing on the oscilloscope. You connect the output to the oscillator. There is nothing on the oscilloscope. There is some noise when the condition of oscillation is not met. When it is met, suddenly the this on the screen an otherwise straight line, which is the electron beam, suddenly breaks up into oscillation. Suddenly it breaks up in. It's an accelerating experience. I I wish you do wear this up, this one and the other one, the phase shift oscillator. I am sure there will be an experiment on oscillation. Okay. No, there is the voltage. Correct. I was going to ask you why not use a potentiometer. Because here also we are using potentiometer. Yeah, but there is a device which can supply energy. Whereas Yes, not only energy loss, there is no element here to supply energy. If it is simply a potentiometer, you need an active device for oscillation. There must be a device which converts DC energy into energy of the oscillations. That is a must for oscillations. We will start from here next time.